Guys, it's so crazy. Things are growing all around me without my knowledge and I'm trying not to break plants because when I try to um, put these shoots up into the enclosure and try to let it climb, sometimes I break the branches. But here's my first Kajari melon. I just noticed it today. How cute. It's got striations and speckles. It's so adorable. Hi friends, it's now another day and there's another zucchini to harvest. As you can see, there's one down there. And then these two beautiful flowers that are big. There's another one down there that's kind of pointed upwards. And then that one back there, which is the biggest one. I'm going to harvest it today. I was going to harvest it yesterday, but it felt like it needed one more day. I got it mostly, thank goodness. So there it is. This black beauty zucchini grew really fast and the leaves have these um, patterns on them that's kind of unique. Some figs are starting to come up. Hopefully I get them get to them before the wildlife do. So my purple opal basil is growing really well. The other one's not doing too well. Um, it's been there for a while. I transplanted it several weeks ago and it was a tiny seedling and now it's growing. I have a cucumber. This one's ready to be harvested. It's quite big. Ooh, it's tougher than I thought. I'm gonna have to get something to cut it. But I have a little baby cuke here. Hopefully. And I know I saw a couple more baby ones. There's one. There's another. They hide really well. I hope this loofah will grow in time. It's so tiny and it's July, mid-July. Here's a watermelon that gets all the sunlight it wants but it barely grows. It grows so slowly. This one is the black diamond watermelon. This tomato plant had several large uh, tomatoes and the squirrels ate them. I have three that were stolen from me, robbed. I also came in here and cut a bunch of leaves out of this area to expose these Kajari melon blossoms so I can have more Kajari melons and so here's one green one and where's the other mature melon? Oh yes. And then while I was trimming these, I found another baby one. Let me find it with my eyes first. There it is. So I'm hoping there will be more. Right next to that Kajari melon are the Cuca melons. Isn't that tiny and cute? Super cute. Here's my other Kajari melon and I also trimmed it down and hopefully it'll make more make some fruit. My zucchini is making fruit right there. It's quite big, but I'm gonna give it one more day because I wanna make zucchini bread. This Kajari melon, it's two plants here of this trellis. And I was trimming it today. There's a pear on my pear tree. Super excited about that. 
And over here is our two Kajari melon plants climbing up this trellis. And I trimmed it today so it's kind of clean down there to expose the flowers. And while I was cleaning it, because this is one of the first plants that I transplanted into the ground. And look, lo and behold, there's a little tiny melon right there. Because <gasps> I was like, why is there no melons on this plant that's been here for a while? Got my enclosure for my protege garden. And my okras are growing tall. And some chili peppers are popping up, finally. Now that it's getting hot. And, and these bean plants are starting to flower. Okra plants over here, these are the Clemson spineless, whereas the other ones were um, evergreen, I think. So they're starting to bloom. So here's my okra plant, and look at the beautiful blooms. And they're making okra. So I've got, ooh, this one's pretty big. Uh, this is the Clemson Spineless. I'll be sure to pluck some every day and um, start eating them. The other variety over there is called Evergreen, I think. I have some more tomatoes growing. I brought them into this enclosure because the squirrels were eating my tomatoes. But the squirrels are climbing in here via my sunflowers. I might have to pull them out because these are meant to feed the birds and attract pollinators, but the squirrels wreak havoc in the garden. So you just come out here and you shake your corn so that it can um, pollinate the, the cobs. I don't think I have cobs in this one though, <clears throat> but I do that daily. And I have sunflowers everywhere. And right here where I grew the, where I pulled out the onions and garlic and stuff, I threw in bean seeds, green beans, they're bush beans in this bed. Some more tomatoes. With some luck, my main crops this year were, will be corn, okra, green beans, chili peppers, tomatoes. And I forgot cucumbers as well. So here's another cucumber. Another cucumber, which I didn't see. They really hide, guys. <laughs> They're really good at hiding. Here's a baby cucumber. Super exciting. My Armenian cucumbers, which I, I was really excited about, it's really floppy and very um, taking forever to grow and it doesn't vine up very easily. It kind of flops over a lot and makes a lot of branches. Hi friends, so this cucumber plant has one here and one here. I already collected the first one and ate it without filming it. I forgot to. And this is an Ashley cucumber, I believe, or Northern Pickling. Here we go. Oops, hard to catch. And here is my giant zucchini. So it was nearly half that size yesterday and I figured um, I would give it another day. It grew so fast. It's huge. So I'm going to harvest that. It's kind of hard to do with one hand, so I'm going to do that. Here it is. Here's that monster. However, when I plucked it, I saw what was shaped like a um, squash bug but it was green with like red dots on the back so but it's shaped just like a squash bug I hope it isn't one because my plant only produced four fruits so far and there's one on the plant still or two and I just hope that it could last a little longer because I didn't grow squash last year so I don't understand how they found it so quick I only have one plant this year I gave the other to my family so that's a little upsetting 
my friends, along my enclosure, I had planted three Kajari melons in this corner here. And maybe it wasn't three Kajaris. Maybe it was two Kajaris. Oh, that's so sad. That one's dying, I think. That melon there. Um, it's turning brown. Um, so I had planted three Kajari melons here, I thought. But it turns out that one is a Kajari melon. Oops. That's the one. Well, two are Kajari melons, possibly. And then I guess I had a random, I think it's a cantaloupe, because obviously it doesn't have the striations here, like the Kajari melons, but it's starting to make an outer, like, um, rough layer, like a cantaloupe. So it could be cantaloupe. <laughs> so hopefully more of the fruits will come along. I don't see hardly any more fruits. However, we have all of August and September, which are primarily hot seasons for us. So I hope it makes more fruit before it starts to fade. Ooh, over here I've got two cucumbers. Let's see if I labeled it. It is, oh, not a calendula. Um, I know it's a cucumber. I just don't know what variety. Because at some point I was trying to catch up with the summer sowing before it was too late. So I was throwing um, northern pickling cucumber seeds everywhere. Lemon cukes as well as um, Ashley cucumbers. So who knows what this is. It's kind of bumpy, so I, I'm going to say northern pickling. So it's trellising up this enclosure pretty well, as long and as well as my green beans. If you'll take a look. I love it. I'm so happy. And they're starting to bloom out with the heat of the summer. And they're starting to make beans. So I'm going to keep my eye on them because these are the yard long beans. Look at how long it is. So I'm going to get a bunch and they're going to be hard to see between the plant itself and the green beans such as right there, several beans and then Here's another Kajari that was supposed to go to my sibling and they didn't have room for it so I planted it here next to my chickens and it's climbing pretty well. Love it. My bee balm Monarda. This is a hot pink color. It looks gorgeous. I love it so much. That's the fresh bloom. This one's kind of fading a little bit. Got to deadhead it. Love it. It's beautiful. I'm hoping to get some watermelon from this. It's making lots of flowers. It had a little bit of transplant shock when I planted it here, so it didn't grow for several weeks. And then it started to get tall and viney, so I'm, I'm glad I finally have it trellising because it was struggling. It was fighting me on on staying on this trellis and but then oops, um, it's not doing too well I had one in the middle but it died a seedling and the thing is it's growing in the shade so I don't know if I'll have any fruit because it loves the summer heat so here is my corn and I've been coming out and trying to remember to shake the corn every day because now it's way above my head. It's probably seven feet tall or maybe more, seven and a half feet. This one's a little stumpy because it's more in the shade I think. Here is another cucumber plant and this one for sure is the northern pickling. 
and look at all the blooms on there oh my goodness and I started trellising it up this enclosure as well and it has so many blooms there's a little one there's another one let's see okay here's one I gotta check them every day because pretty soon they're gonna start to make a bunch I've harvested two let me see three from from my plants so far cucumbers so all along my enclosure I have green beans growing it didn't grow as densely as I thought over here but it definitely is growing upwards upwards and onwards and also making green beans yard long beans I'm just hoping that, so I have a couple skinny ones here, but I hope that they kind of get a little bit bigger. Not long wise, but wider. So I love basil and this, this basil here, I'm not sure if it's cinnamon basil. Let me see, because I'm not usually good at um, labeling. Yeah, I'm not sure, but it smells fantastic. Oh my gosh. Like cinnamon, I believe. Cinnamon basil. And here I have two Armenian cucumbers. And because they are categorized as melons, um, officially, they kind of splay out more than they do climb. So it has many arms. And... Um, it doesn't stay up very well. It flops over a lot, and I'm always constantly trying to climb, trellis it up here, and now it's starting to, but I had to help it with the wrapping of the, um, the tendrils. So, but they keep flopping over still. Lots of flowers, but not a single fruit yet so it's a little disappointing unless the melons take longer to make fruit and then we direct sow this cucumber and it's doing fantastic um, it's later than that um, Armenian cucumber but it's coming along beautifully and it looks really healthy so this is my enclosure for my garden and it's full of vines for the yard long beans so it's making yard long beans everywhere super excited about it I'm gonna have to be really careful about harvesting it though because it's gonna be hard to find the beans they're camouflaging and then over here is my garden beds and more garden beds so I've been trying to keep succession sowing all kinds of things. As soon as I pulled out my onions and stuff, I put in some pull, uh, some bush beans right there. And then I have okra. I'm harvesting every day. And I'm saving my harvest until I have a big enough quantity of okra to um, to cook with. So in this long bed, I have chili peppers right there, and then over here I have okra. This is the emerald green, I think it's called emerald something or another. Gosh, I really hate to disturb it because all these um, blossoms uh, from the green beans fall off. So I hope it still makes fruit even when the flowers fall off. Um, let me see what this is called. Yes, emerald okra. Let's see. So it's, it is starting to flower. This emerald okra I sowed probably a month and a half after I sowed my first batch of okra. And these are catching up. So I planted this emerald okra about 
a month or a month and a half after my Clemson spineless okra and look at how robust it is it's really big green healthy leaves and it grew really fast but it could be that it's the quality of this type of like the characteristic or feature of this type of okra or it could be that I grew it more in the summer and so it likes the summer heat and it grew, it grew faster and caught up to the Clemson spineless. But I was looking in here, I have a few flowers and a few baby plants, but nothing that's gonna be able to be harvested yet. But yes, watch out. So when you have a baby okra, you will harvest it within the next day or two. So you gotta keep your eye out. So every morning, this is the first thing I look at to harvest because I know that to be true, that I don't want them to be um, hard or too, too big because then you can't eat them and then it's gonna make the plant think that it's gonna go to seed and it won't make more okra for me. And this year I'm really craving okra. I already collected a batch, um, so I collect some every day, uh, first thing, so that they don't mature. And then I put them in a bag and I accrue enough to make a stir fry out of. So I stir fried some with some onions and some green beans and they were delicious. So here is the Clemson Spineless. A whole packet went into this uh, fire ring so it looks really crowded and I know you're supposed to grow them 10 to 12 to even 15 inches apart I've heard but I just don't have room and in this bed I had something else growing I'm trying to remember and I don't <laughs> remember but I had something growing here and I pulled out whatever was in here and I stuck these uh, okra in right away because I really want to succession sow and to have lots of things to eat on hand. So this one I've been collecting a lot of okra and I probably out of fear started harvesting them when they're like tiny like this like the size of like my finger not even two knuckles and I'm collecting them. Here's another one. Here's the flower that's starting and then here's another one. So I collect them at about that stage, that stage and they're probably still, they're very tender but I probably could use another couple days. So I've got some laggy ones that are real short in there and then I've got this extra super tall one and let's see here's some more so I'm gonna give that a couple days that one's even smaller and let's see here's here's a one that I would have harvested but I think I I'm gonna give it another day So quite a few. So tomorrow or the day after, I'm gonna be harvesting quite a few. Um, this one's pretty large, so I don't know. I don't wanna have it get too tough. And then in here, I had a basil, one of the sweet basils that you buy from the grocery store. And it was on its last leg indoors, and I just rushed to get it out. It was, it, lo it was looking very, very sad. I was I thought it was gonna die so I planted it here and it came back to life and I've been harvesting from it and it took a while to fill out but now it is so I'm gonna start to harvest some more for pastas and stuff my peppers my peppers had a late start to growing so they're kind of sad looking but they finally came up with the heat that's coming we're having like 90 degree temperatures, 98, 95 degrees. The tomatoes that I grew along there are doing great. I had to tie one towards the fence there. So the tallest chili pepper 
is this one that did really well compared to all the rest. one I've got tomatoes growing this one is a black sea man tomato and that one as well and I harvested one and it's on the table that blushed so I'm happy to have those there's another I think cantaloupe and so here I threw some emerald um, okra kind of around so uh, the enclosure so if I see some more with the same um, type of leaf and it just has an upright growth I'll know it's okra um, and then here I have cucumber melons I just see tiny little cucumber melons, but I don't see big enough cucumber melons to harvest. They're supposed to be the size of like the your thumb, kind of. And I mean, it's supposed to obviously take some time to grow, but it sure is taking forever because they're the tiniest of tiny. That one doesn't look good. But then there are some pretty good looking ones. But they're all really tiny. So I'm hoping with the heat that it's going to do better in the fruiting rather than the leafing out. So I have a couple tomatoes that are outside of my enclosure. And I'm hoping that critters don't spot them before they blush. So I can, as soon as it blushes, I'm going to bring it indoors. But it's not blushing yet. Here's another one hiding. My only blue flowers here, my cone flowers, are starting to fade from the heat. So I guess it doesn't like these very very hot temperatures but my cosmos this is my double dutch rose cosmo doing great some regular cosmos purple varieties it looks really pretty when you have the purple purplish pink against the blue it's so pretty too bad these are going the wayside. And same with my poppies, I'm gonna have to pull them out. Um, meanwhile, I threw in some seeds for sunflowers. I think this is the um, velvet, red velvet or something like that. It's, I forget what it's called. It's the red one. And then I have a zinnia there. And look at the zinnia, it's already popping up. Um, it's kind of poor germination rate because I threw the seeds in here a while ago and they're just not doing very well. I threw some more Cosmo seeds down there and I'm hoping those are it. But really poor germination rate right here. Not sure why. Oh wow, I finally see a tomato coming out of this set of plants. It's the vintage wine tomato. It, it's been really poor at making fruit.
My beautiful purple opal basil's coming up, coming up. That one's a little shaded out by the strawberry plant, but this one's doing awesome. Let me smell it. Mmm, it smells like the sweet basil, the green ones. I'm just hoping it'll fill out so that I can harvest a bunch. I like to use them in cooking. Let's see, I've harvested a couple of cucumbers from this plant and I've been pulling out leaves down here like crazy because they didn't look good but for some reason it's not doing very well oops sorry so there is a dead looking cucumber with a decent looking cucumber here's a decent looking cucumber so we'll see I don't like to mess around with the plants while they're making fruit Ow. Oh my gosh. Ouch. They're so um, prickly. So here's one that this leaf is unhealthy. It's got leaf miners. So I toss these. I pull them out and I toss them. Here's a shinseki pear. Um, there are a couple more shinseki pears. And back there... Lots of kefir lime leaves and kefir limes. My moringa is starting to flower. Comes back year after year, but then in the winter it kind of dies down and it's just a twig and then it comes back again. <laughs> so I guess I should be appreciative because now it has two stalks. So my calla lilies die back every winter and so they were in this little tiny pot and all I saw was dirt so I didn't see the bulbs. So I threw them in the ground and now look at how many there are. One, two, three, four, five, six, six plants I believe. Wow. I've got a beautiful rose blooming here. Love it. It's gorgeous. Look at this amazing citronella. I do nothing. It survived the winter and it's growing so lush everywhere and it smells really good. Mmm, it has that lemony smell and somewhere over here I have a geranium. The blooms are not too, too great. My apples, I had a lot more apples and they've been ravaged by squirrels every day. It's been really annoying. Um, same that happened to my donut peaches and same that happens to my pomegranates. So this one is starting to have like little red striations. That's awesome. Hopefully, um, I'm, s I'm supposed to bag them, but it's too hard to bag every single fruit, especially when they're like close together or in clusters. And then, um, this is a four in one tree, so it has different branches. So it's really hard, especially when it gets really tall, to put a like netting around the whole entire tree. So it's it's a struggle. The struggle is real. Um, they've eaten all my apricots. I didn't get a single one this year. Last year I got like seven or eight, <clears throat> and they are decimating my pineapple guava, my feijoa tree. So it's nice and bushy, really big like the apricot tree behind it. And now this silvery green colored tree is 
whether it be a raccoon, um, squirrels, um, possums.